Okay? Shifting gears. What if we now had our physician and we said to our physician, Sir, you are a physician. He said, oh yes, I'm a physician. Do you have the art? Oh yes, I have the art. Good then, sir. Would you not agree you should be able to go into each culture and take a look at traditional remedies in each culture? Should he not then say, oh yes, I would be interested in doing that? Now, what would he look for? Would he try to now master each of these cultures? Or would he try to look to see what they do best in their traditional medicine? Ah, and he would then examine only that, wouldn't he? All right, good. Let's see, we go one more step now. Pardon? Best or better? Oh, yes. Best or better, certainly. Yeah. Oh, definitely. Yeah. Now, would he do something, let us assume now, he goes through this and says, I think this one expresses it best. Would he now then simply use that traditional remedy as it is, or would he then try to discover how it fits into his own system? integrated in his own system. Try to bring it into his own system. So then he'd have to bring that, discover if it's best, he'd have to discover two things. One, why it's not in his, because that would disclose, would it not, on the assumption that he's found something meaningful? That would disclose that there's a weakness in his, or it would have, had a, it would have been filled. But he might find that one system is better for one patient, but not necessarily good. You're absolutely right. And therefore, he would have to have a keen eye on what kinds of patients respond to what kinds of treatment better than other patients. That's yeah. right. He'd be able then to deal with types of patients to the degree to which they respond to a variety of techniques. That's right. Right. He would have to have that insight as well. Indeed. So then look here then. Then he'd look at this and he'd have to say, why is it that it wasn't in mind? And that would bring him to the question of whether or not his system has a weakness that they never noticed before, and then seek some way to resolve that weakness. Oh, next. We did not agree then. He would then have to bring it in to his own so that it can fit. That's sometimes called, can be integrated in all of the principles which he already has. Now, if he can't do that, then there's something that doesn't fit into his art that's superior to his art. Now he has a big interesting judgment to make. But if he can integrate it into his own, so that his own principles then can be utilized to bring it together so then he gets a new insight into it, would you not agree? that would solve the weakness? Yes. That doesn't mean, though, he hasn't discovered the reason for the weakness in the first place. He would still have to do that. Ah, now we're over here. What, how do you, how do you uh, place the idea like some modern doctors are in fact admitting that there's much to some of this uh, traditional medicine and they don't know why it works exactly? like acupuncture, they, they have theories, but they don't know why it works, and it doesn't fit into anything they've got yet, but they're going to go ahead and use it. Okay. <laughs> That's a weakness within their system. And they'd have to acknowledge there's a weakness in their system, and they would have to try to discover why, search, why something works, yet doesn't fit into the principles that operate in their system. They'd either have to add to their principles, which would allow that, therefore it would become more comprehensive, but that would mean the part would have to be integrated to fit within it in terms of its principles with the adjunctive principle that they've discovered. Mm -hmm. Now, if that's true, now we go back over here. Okay. See, as an example. Would, he, would you agree he would not want to study the whole culture and all their views, but he's only going to go again 
for the best mm -hmm. and the most developed? Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. So therefore, he would only go for the best and the most developed? Mm -hmm. yeah, I mean, my dad, he, yeah, oh yeah, okay, with this chalk, I can add a lot. <laughs> would you not agree then, by the same logic then, he's not going to become one of these, but he's going to try to draw those into a more integrated form to strengthen his own position and remove that particular vulnerability or weakness that existed before. Ah, so in that way he can then perfect even further his own system by a comparative study. I want to go one more step with this now. All right. Therefore, if someone is into comparative study of different spiritual systems, because they can tell you stories about each one and can give very learned accounts of who said what and when they said it, we would say that's a wonderful thing to know. You haven't reached the level of an art until you can go the next step and point out if there's anything in these different cultures or different religious and spiritual systems that is so significant that cannot be included in your own or doesn't have a corresponding piece in your own because that's the goal of an art, to make the art as perfect as possible. So that, let's say, would you not agree there are various people in our, our society who make comparative studies? Oh, you know, Joe Campbell, Alan Watts, a whole group of people. But we would say to them, would we not, it's nice to hear these stories. It's nice that you've understood these, but we want you to go the next step and identify those pieces that are so profound, and their profundity is a measure in this sense, of the fact that we don't have it in our own and need it to overcome a weakness. And therefore, would you not agree they would not be comparative specialists at all? Only to the degree that they're looking for the goods which are there and may not have a comparable part in their own art. So in other words, they have the information, but they're not, it, they haven't mastered it into knowledge. Of these people. Right. That's right, they don't have arts. That's right. If they're not doing something similar, they wouldn't have the art. Mm -hmm. That's right. That's a nice jump. Well, that's right. Therefore, if anyone who does take their discipline, this particular spiritual discipline, as an art, mm -hmm. would you not agree, here's a hard step, they would have to make a different kind of synthesis of what it is they have discovered and not merely be content to talk about each one, their strengths and weaknesses. In other words, they have to make, be willing to let it have an impact on what they're doing. Pardon? Words, Do it again. Do it again. Uh, in other words, say, say a Christian, mm -hmm. say you have an art called Christianity is going to benefit the soul. Mm -hmm. He would say, fine, then it would behoove a Christian theologian to, to, to uh, study all other religions, looking yeah. for that which benefits the soul in a certain way. That's right. And to see if any of these other religions may have aspects that haven't been developed in Christian That's tradition. right, that's right. Because then, then he'd have to acknowledge his own position had a weakness. Mm-hmm. Uh, augment it. And be willing to augment it. Yes. In other words, if the system's not willing to grow and augment, then that's you can right. say that it's... Frozen in time. It's frozen in time, therefore it can't be an art. Can't be an art. And therefore it can't really be a benefit. That's right, that's right. Look, now, okay. see that one part, I want to stress that you said, okay, one part. Because when, these, when this is identified as significant and meaningful, that, that fulfills a weakness or a gap in the art, the ultimate test would be whether or not then it could be used to benefit the subject back to it, isn't it? Because we are after, are we not, the perfection of man, the perfection of the soul. Mm 